What a magical day this is. Congratulations. Good morning. My name is Dr. Bruce Steuben, and I'm the provost of the university and the dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. It's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker this morning, uh, my good friend who, where are you, good friend? Over there. I've known for a very long time and a colleague, Dr. Barbara Rossley. I've had the privilege of uh, knowing Dr. Barbara Rossley for many years. Actually, we started out as interns together. Um, and I've learned more from this person than almost anybody during my life. I've learned wisdom. Uh, I've learned to take the high ground. And I've learned how to work hard. And I've learned from a great role model. Dr. Rossley has experienced in so many fields, including primary care medicine, education, the military, health policy, just to name a few. Uh, Dr. Bross Rossley has been aptly rec recognized as a history maker. Did you know that? As a history maker for her achievements in medicine and in education. She's just amazing. She overcame the adversity and obstacles that our society underwent in the late 60s um, that was often presented to women, to minorities who endeavor to become physicians. She earned her undergraduate degree and her, uh, degree and her Master of Arts degrees from the Wayne State University in Detroit, and she received her Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine from the Michigan State University College of Osteopathic Medicine. After running her own private practice for many years, she became a commissioned officer in the United States Naval Reserve, where she served more than a decade. Throughout her career, Dr. Rossley, or as her friends know her as Barbara, has been a dedicated clinical professor, the department chair for family medicine at Michigan State, a preceptor to hundreds of students, a fellow with the Robert Wood Johnson Health Policy Fellow Institute of Medicine, and she serves at the National Academy of Science. In 1993, Dr. Barbara Rossley was the first African American woman to be appointed as Dean of an American Medical School where she joined the Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine. She now serves as Vice President of Health, Sciences, and Medical Affairs for the New York Institute of Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the distinguished lady and my friend, Dr. Barbara Rossley. That was a wonderful introduction, but it, it kind of happens when you've been around a long time. <laughs> okay. Today is a really festive occasion. I would like to thank the Board of Trustees, the administration, faculty, staff, and even you students, but especially Drs. Dubin and Hahn for inviting me to be your commencement speaker. When you think about being a commencement speaker, you have to kind of decide what are you going to talk about, because this is a really important occasion, and I certainly feel that. So um, I wanted to decide what is it you needed to know, that last thing before you went out and start to, uh, to practice in your professions. What was the most important thing that you hadn't already had? Okay, and I couldn't, I came up with three topics, but I couldn't make up my mind. So I want you to help me. Now, by the way, I can give all three or four of my presentations, because I'm prepared. I got them all here. Or you can choose one. So are you ready? You ready to help me, all of you? OK. My first choice was maybe you needed to have that last lecture about Einstein's theory of rel relativity as a strategic basis for future health workforce planning. That was one. And then I had another one, uh, the sociocultural access, cost, and quality of care implications of genetic analysis as a disease prevention strategy. You, you, OK. Um, then number three uh, is possibly the implications of a diagnosis of G6PD deficiency on the management of diabetes mellitus utilizing hemoglobin A1C. 
I didn't hit the spot yet? Okay, and then I thought, you know, maybe you were just kind of, at, on this occasion, much more focused on you. And I thought maybe you might want to hear what the future holds for each of you and what our expectations are. But I don't want you to j all at once, uh, you get to vote, because I know how good you are at multiple choice questions. <laughs> so A is Einstein. If you want me to talk about Einstein, just raise your hand. <laughs> I want you all to remember who did that. And then, of course, if you want me to talk about, what was that next one I had? Uh, Social cultural acts and all of that as it relates to prevention. No, no, no. Okay. And then number three, the implications of G6PD deficiency with, with hemoglobin A1C? No. Okay. So then number four is uh, what the future holds for each of you and, the expecta and our expectations. Oh. I was starting to get concerned <laughs> that you didn't want to hear anything at this point in time. Okay, so here we go. Years ago, you started all out on an educational path that has led you to this auditorium today. You set a goal that only a very few, and I mean a very few, ever are able to achieve. And for most of you, that means becoming an osteopathic physician or certainly becoming a professional in the area of medicine and bioscience. It hasn't always been easy or even fun, but today you have arrived. You have required the knowledge and mastered the skills necessary to become a medical professional. Becoming a physician is not just a career choice, by the way. It is a high calling with awesome responsibilities, but it's also something else. From this day forward, those of you who are receiving your DO degree today will need to understand that being a physician is now an immutable part of who you are and who you will always be. It's very much like your race, ethnicity, or gender. It will be how you think of yourself and how others think of you. Because being a physician not only describes what you will do, but, it, but who you are. No other profession is so honored. Your faculty, mentors, and peers have often reminded you of the awesome responsibilities that the practice of medicine and involvement in the medical system involves. But today, I won't talk about the responsibilities. Instead, today, I'll talk about expectations. This society expects much from its physicians and health professionals because it places a great deal of trust in how you provide what you provide. You already know that your parents will likely refer to you as the, your, their son or daughter, the doctor. Your children will happily re tell their friends that my dad or my mom is a doctor, and at the same time, they'll volunteer you for show and tell at school. Your spouse will hear social acquaintances at dinners and parties whispering that he or she is married to a doctor. Your friends will introduce you as, this is my friend, the doctor. Your friends, family members, colleagues, and other individuals in society will also have consistently high expectations of you. These expectations relate directly to your character as much as they relate to your skills and knowledge as a physician or a healthcare professional. From this day forward, these expectations will become a part of the fabric of your lives. These expectations will define you. Your friends will see you as a personal reflection of their social status. They expect you to be successful, and they expect free advice and discounted service. Your families 
who have shared your aspirations, witnessed your sacrifices, and to whom you owe much, will expect you to be financially and socially successful. Above all else, they will expect you to be happy. But they will also expect you to serve as their personal health advocate. They will expect you to facilitate, expedite, explain, and run interference for them in all health and medical matters. You will become the personal, willing, and unpaid medical navigator and expert consultant for all of their friends and neighbors. Get ready. Your spouses and significant others will be overheard talking about the miracles that you have achieved with your patients because they expect you to perform miracles. It's important that you're aware of these expectations because they're pivotal to your future happiness and success. Your profession and school, your profession and school expect you to be loyal, supportive, involved, and above all, competent. Your colleagues will expect you to be dependable and reliable, committed to the highest quality of care and responsive to their request in a timely manner. In other words, return those emails and phone calls promptly. Your future patients will expect you to listen, observe, promote health and function, relieve pain and suffering, be understanding, and respect them as individuals, irrespective of who they are. They will also expect you to be available whenever they need you, irrespective of what you are doing at the time. Your community will expect you to have integrity, high morals, leadership skills, common sense, excellent communication skills, good judgment, good judgment in all things personal and professional. And finally, they expect you to have empathy and a caring attitude for all people, regardless of their economic status, regardless of their race, religion, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, type of insurance, or lack thereof. And then there's society in general that has many expectations and assumptions. You will be accept, expected and assumed to be responsible, unbiased, non-judgmental, ethical, a teacher and a role model. You will be expected to be wise in all things, to be honorable and to be honest to a fault. In other words, you're expected to be professionals. Finally, you will expect it to be committed to the betterment of humankind, an advocate for good causes and for other people. Frequently, that takes the form of a financial donation, so be ready. You enter this profession at the best of times and the worst of times. The future is unavoidable, but more importantly, the future is in your hands. So let me share my personal expectations for each of the graduates, and I call them the four Bs. Be good. Do the best that you can do, and be the absolute best that you can be. Somebody's life might depend on it. Be wise. Use your education, but don't abandon common sense. Employ good judgment based on the knowledge and skills that you have attained. Continue to learn because status quo is a formula for mediocrity, and nobody here aspires to be the mediocre. Be proud. 
Osteopathic medicine has succeeded against all odds to contribute something valuable to health care in this country. Each of you must be confident they, that you can make contributions to the health of this nation as osteopathic physicians. And finally, be visionary. Change has been described as the only constant. Nowhere is change more evident than in healthcare. Contribute to change that will make things better for the populations that you serve and the profession that you represent. Four Bs, be good, be wise, be proud, be visionary. Now, I'm sure that you'll meet and surpass all of these expectations because your school has chosen you and educated you to be a member of the proud and distinctive profession of osteopathic medicine and has prepared our master's degree candidates in areas that are becoming more and more important to the practice of medicine on a daily basis. You are the future of health care. Enhance, guard, and contribute to the strength of your professions because we all bring important and valuable perspectives to the future. As I conclude, let me leave you with some advice from a famous doctor. In fact, he's one of the most famous doctors in the world. No, I'm not talking about C. Everett Koop or Dr. Carson, not even Dr. DeBakey, not Dr. Spock or Dr. Phil or even Dr. Oz. You know who it is? Dr. Seuss. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. So be your name, Buxbaum, Bixby, or Bray, or Mordecai, Rodriguez, Van Allen, or O'Shea. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Congratulations to the class of 2014. Thank you.